Uh, my name is Maxin Lewis, and I represent Magenta Mobility. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you, uh, organizers, dignitaries on the stage, guys, and my fellow participants over here uh, for inviting us over here. How I'm going to talk through the next couple of minutes uh, is I'm going to introduce what Magenta Mobility is doing, really speaking, and how we are trying to help uh, make sure that the planet is a little bit more greener than what we are going to be inherited it with. Uh, I'm also going to talk a little bit about the EV space and then probably questions if, if, that, if time allows. So uh, to start with, let's uh, do a quick raise of hands. In the last six months, any one of you have ordered a package from the likes of Amazon, Big Basket, Flipkart, Blinkit, or any other last mile delivery services? Anyone in the last six months, raise of hands? Yeah, okay. Almost all? Unfortunately, every time you made an order, you contributed three kgs of CO2 greenhouse gases. So every time you opened that package, remember this is what you did to the environment. So what does Magenta do? Uh, we are a company seed funded by Hindustan Petroleum Corporation Limited, 2018. As we started off, we uh, set up India's first solar-based EV charging station, uh, uh, India's first EV highway, Bombay Pune EV highway, India's first EV charging app was Magenta Charge Grid. Incidentally and uh, continuously from there, we started to find out what are the challenges in the adoption of EV. And Ashim, thanks to you, I mean, you kind of covered it, but I'll make it more real to what we really did on the ground. Uh, and we identified that there are multiple challenges, and one of them was EV charging, and that's what we started off doing. Uh, we did a lot of work in that space, a lot of uh, India's first residential charging solution was set up by us. Uh, but we soon realized that EV charging is not the only problem, there are multiple parts of it. So we started to build up a business and at this point in time, uh, we have three business verticals within Magenta Mobility. And I'll relate it back to the first question that I asked, how much you're contributing to the uh, greenhouse gases is because Magenta Mobility now the first business that we have is uh, we are India's largest EV cargo last mile delivery services in the three-wheeler and four-wheeler space. We operate a fleet of close to 1,200 electric vehicles. So the next time in Delhi, if you see Magenta vehicles, that's us. This is supported by uh, EV charging. We operate more than 39 charging depots across India, uh, which means our captive requirement of charging is what we and incidentally, Ashim, what you said, right? Uh, EV charging, while many people are putting it up, utilization is an issue. We soon realized we could be our biggest utilizer, and that's what we set up. So our mobility services is supported by our charging business. Now, how do you put all of this together? We have our own informatics team, which is a technology. So sitting over here on my mobile, I can tell you where are all my 1,200 vehicles. Easy, that's GPS. What is the speed? Easy, GPS. I can actually tell you whether my vehicle headlights are on. I can tell you what is the SOC in the battery, hence how far the vehicle can go, and I can even tell you what is the temperature of the battery right now. That's the kind of technology solution we've built in, uh, in, in our vehicle platform. And we also have the charging platform which is inherently we built since 2018, which tells me where is my nearest charging point, whether it's available or not available, and if available, uh, when is the next, I mean, uh, we are also now, that, that's how the integration is. So effectively when we, Magenta Mobility as a service provider, is providing last mile logistics with the charging infrastructure and a technology platform. So this is how the three business units work together to make sure that the next time you order a package, you don't contribute uh, three kilograms of CO2, CHGs, emissions, right? So this is what Magenta is. Uh, What's the, I'll just give a quick view of our plans ahead. Uh, we are right now in 10 cities. We are launching in multiple other cities. Uh, and fortunately, today is a great day for us. Incidentally, uh, the diamond sponsor, Sidbi, and us signed an agreement just today itself where Sidbi is uh, kind of uh, um, providing debt capital to more vehicles on the road because they believed in what we're bringing to the table. So this is the EV, what's Magenta Mobility doing? But what really is happening in the EV space? Unfortunately or fortunately, every time we talk about EV, the only time we consider an EV or we register an EV in our mind system is when we see a four-wheeler, right? But that's not where real EV adoption actually is happening. 
uh, if you see the numbers, uh, the actual adoption has already happened. Right? If you have seen, if you have been uh, uh, checking the numbers which come on a monthly basis, you can go to Eva Han and you can check that. The two-wheeler numbers that have taken off, right? Three-wheeler cargo electric sells more than ICE cargo vehicles today in India, three-wheelers, already done. So, and what we believe is the last adoption is going to happen in the passenger car segments. So, but we end up having to, having, talking a lot about passenger car segments, about DC charging, because that's what people register, people see. But the real adoption has actually happened, and the best city where the adoption has happened is actually Delhi, where leave aside L5, but the real e-rickshaws, there are close to around 15 lakh e-rickshaws right now on an, on an actual monthly basis, close to around 60,000 e-rickshaws are being sold. Uh, so it's important to re-register and rethink what electric vehicles really are and to start to see at the real places where the adoption is happening. Unknown to many, a lot of adoption is actually happening in rural spaces because that's where people have realized the total cost of ownership of running an electric vehicle makes a lot of sense, especially in the two-wheeler and three-wheeler segment and not so much in the passenger. Like Ashim rightly brilliantly said that what people were assuming is the elect, uh, adoption in the four-wheeler space will happen where price sensitivity is there, but unfortunate or fortunately it has happened in a very different segment. So, Welcome to a world where the rules of automotive adoption are no longer valid. It's a new world system, it's a new adoption uh, ecosystem. But what next? There are many people who have asked us, uh, okay, so electric vehicles and uh, you are talking that it is green, uh, but not really so because you are actually consuming electricity from the grid. Uh, and I totally agree and I'll rephrase the statement by saying, Electric vehicles is not solving the pollution problem. It is only transferring it from the tailpipe to the chimney stack. Unless and until there is a greening of the grid. Right? So what are some of the things that have happened in India? Uh, many people miss this. Uh, India, uh, for many people, EV policy was only recently, right? 2018, 19 is when you, the first EV policy was way back in 2013, if I remember right, or even earlier. And, yeah. 12, 12. 12. And you know which was the first state to do it? Any guesses? It's Uttar Pradesh. Right? We can check it out. It's right there. Uh, so there, a lot of things have happened. In fact, now, a lot of greening of the solar, the grid is happening due to solar. But the best part is open access. Earlier for someone to have open access. What does open access mean? I can pick up solar energy and consume it at my industry. It was a minimum of one megawatt was a minimum cutoff point. Uh, but if I'm correct. But the government of India has done a brilliant uh, change in that. It is now 100 kilowatts, which means today my electric vehicles, the charging station for those electric vehicles can actually take an open access from a solar producer and 100% I can tell you that the electric vehicles are running green. So it's important to understand that there are a lot of layers in electric vehicles or uh, in this space really, in the EV ecosystem. It's important to understand what are the different, different layers and not everyone can solve everything, right? My last point would be the fact that uh, we have given 100 or more than 100 years to the ICE ecosystem to build the number of petrol pumps, uh, the entire supply chain, better engines, two stroke, four stroke and all of that and all of that has happened. Uh, incidentally, electric vehicles came before that, but we lost electric vehicles lost somewhere in the race. Uh, you need to provide time for this ecosystem to grow. But the best part is for electricity, you don't have to go anywhere, it is coming to your home. Right? So their infrastructure is already in place, but it's just an upgradation required. So my submission to this team is, uh, when we're talking about at a place where it is renewable energy, uh, uh, it is important to see EV in an ecosystem view. Just add another very interesting part, as you said, about electricity and the storage part of it. Just one last point that I want to add is, uh, it, the electric vehicles are green in themselves if once they consume green energy, but the batteries of these electric vehicles incidentally have something called as a second life, which when the five years, seven years, whatever they continue to use, we will can use these batteries as a storage mechanism in the same charging station for which will be taking solar power from the grid under open access, right? So this is the future of EV. It may not be directly, uh, for you as an individual, it may not directly impact, 
because you don't see this happening, you are not part of that experience. The only experience you have is charging in that vehicle. And sometimes a lot of things go wrong in that, but unfortunately. But the bigger adoption of electric vehicles is happening on the fleet side, especially for Magenta. There's a lot of greening in the grid. There are a lot of new, thanks to the government of India, uh, and uh, I do think it is time to give credits to the government of India for going, taking a lot of leap of faith and a lot of notifications uh, uh, that are coming in which is a lot more progressive than a lot of countries who seemingly are progressive in this space. Just that we don't use it or you don't see that being deployed, but uh, some companies do, some individuals do, some entities do. So this is where I, uh, my submission to this entire forum is uh, renewable energy, uh, greening, uh, it's, a, it's an ecosystem, it's a path. Do not expect everything to happen today, give it time. But uh, there are individuals amongst us, there are companies, along, companies amongst us, there are government individuals, states along, amongst us, who are doing a lot in this space. Uh, how you can contribute? So the next time you order your Amazon, Flipkart, Big Basket, ask the delivery person, which, which vehicle did you use? Uh, was it an electric? Tip him. Thank you so much.